All right. Try so not one to do of, this for this one of my biggest questions that I would love to know for you guys is, you guys did all that at such a young age, and like for being so funny, like where did you guys get your comedy background and your start with that? Well, <laughs> well, I uh, I would say that my father probably had a lot to do with it. When I was at a very young age. Uh, Reciting most Monty Python, everything, <laughs> sketches, awesome. the movies, everything. So I feel like I learned a lot from just, I learned sure. about timing yes. from that. Yes, and then, sure. I don't know, I learned a lot from this lady right here when I first joined all that. <laughs> I mean, seriously, when I first joined, I was a little nervous because I'd been on other shows that were not, he, he was like much more like subdued and like sort yeah. of dark comedy in that way and this was like over and, yeah over and like, you're like oh man da, da, da. but Lori Beth really helped me a lot to develop characters and like sort of understand the whole concept of these games. I don't know if I ever told you that. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And as far as like writing goes, were you guys involved in, in writing your own skits or was the majority of it written for you and you guys performed? We had a uh, great writer. The majority of it was written, um, notably Dan Schneider, Keith Seifert, yeah. Kevin Coppolo, um, uh, there's a Neil lot. Brennan, Steve, Steve Holland. Morgan. I'm totally forgetting Alice's last name, but he went on to win an Emmy for Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, Steve Freeman. There was a lot of people too. Yeah. But you would get, a, I mean, we would get, you do some improv. And so when a line would make it into the next revision of the script, it was like, like yes. Uh, on the but, last, yeah. then for me, the last season of all that, uh, I got writing credit, and uh, Mark Saul, who's another cast member, he and I yeah. actually don't want to toot my own horn, but we're the only two, two the only two cast members with actual writing credits. Yeah. The last season, we were in the writers' rooms and we wrote a couple sketches and stuff. But, but most of it was just there on the page, and there were so many crazy, you know, like stunts and set pieces and. Goo falling on us and all that kind of stuff that it was typical nineties Nick stuff, you know? Exactly. <laughs> I miss the slime, I can't even lie. I still do to this day. When I walk into a set I look up to make sure because there would be two there would be two I don't buckets. Know, you're just <laughs> well, there would be two big white buckets like sitting there and you'd be you, like, alright. Do you have this happen to you as well? The the um, Apple, the smart bright people. They have, they have a sound on their oh, alarm, which the is the secret the slime, secret action, slime sound. action sound. So sometimes you'll hear is. that, and it's like, wah, wah, and it's, wah. Just it's like, a really oh, annoying it, sound, but I have yeah. like PS. <laughs> it, that PSD is. PSD hardcore for that, I hear that. I'm like, Jesus Christ. That sound effect is used a lot of places. Yeah. And yeah. it took a long time, yeah. literally. When I would hear it, I would yeah. kind of like, it really, <laughs> <Yeah. not laughs> <honestly. laughs> What kind of stuff do you guys have going on these days? Oh, well, I uh, I still do sketch comedy. I write stuff for Funny or Die and Call Humor. Awesome. Um, Manboobscomedy.com. That's where you go okay. to check out the video. <laughs> They're going to put it right here. Right, right at the end. Yep. Manboobscomedy.com. Manboobs yeah. I have a band called Jounce. And we tour awesome. a lot. And, yeah, so, between music and comedy. He's a pussy guy. <laughs> I did have fun on the workaholic no, no. set. Yeah, it was, um, honestly, I, they called me and said, do you want to do this? And I said, yes. And they said, well, here's your scene. You're playing yourself. You're in a hot tub with the guys. I'm like, okay. I hadn't really watched the show. And I saw the scene and I'm like, that's fine. I didn't read the script. And when I got on set and I was getting hair and makeup done and the trailer stuff, I'm like, well, I should read the script now. And I was like, oh. The whole thing is that my drug dealer came over <laughs> and we're super hot and I was like, okay. And people loved it. It was so, I got, I got all these uh, Facebooks and stuff from fans like, oh, Lori Beth, I want to get high with you. Like, That's not quite where I wanted my career to go. But, um, but I'm right, to answer your question that Danny answered was, uh, I have a writing partner, Clark Crozer, and we are doing all kinds of stuff for like digital production companies and I officiate weddings. That's my favorite thing that oh, I do. That is, is I officiate if I wasn't already weddings. married, I'd be like How renewal. I do <laughs> vow renewal. <laughs> yes. For three years. So that's my um, that's my favorite thing that I'm doing right now. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't want to call it yeah. questions. What? Oh! Anybody else have other questions? Do you guys have any particular favorite memories back in the old, all that days? Anything that stands out? Favorite memories that stand out. Um, I like that I was um, 18 when we were doing the first season, so I didn't have to go to school. <laughs> so, well, Danny wasn't there. Danny wasn't there, but um, on, I think, Mondays, we would come in, the kids would go to school, the kids, We'd go to school for an hour, then we'd have the read-through, then they'd go back to school for an hour, and then we had lunch. So I didn't have to go to, so I had this two-hour lunch, and I would go out into Universal Studios and go on ET and Back to the Future and maybe get something to eat, and I just, I just loved that. Universal Studios, I love Hollywood, was my favorite place growing up. So that was a really fun, nice memory to be able to just stroll around at will. And to know the secret code to get back yeah. in the neck. Yeah. Like, come on. I didn't have any of those memories. I was a kid. Oh. <laughs> I was in school. Um, <laughs> so many awesome things. I mean, I can particularly remember when Wyclef was a musical guest um, mm. that they sh we usually we would shoot the musical guest twice. One to get it in the bag and then the second time just in case. So we got the one in the bag and then the second time we came out, the bass player let me grab his bass. Kel came out and started rapping. And for our, maybe like three minutes, I was on stage jamming with Wyclef. So that's a pretty, at 16 years old, yeah. I was like, yeah, right? get some cred. <laughs> Wait, you said you were one of the kids that had to do the hour of schooling? Uh, three hours. Okay. Just three hours a day, and then if you weren't busy that day, they make you back. You get up six. How do they make that productive? Those well, three what hours? they do is so you had to get 15 hours of schooling in a week. So they get it however they can, but like state law or whatever, SAC law, SAC rules, you have to get 15 hours. So they try to get three hours a day, which equals 15. But do you, or have, bank you. Do you have like work that your school has sent you with? Yeah. Yep, and then I crush it because you're getting tutored so all the stuff is done so I go back to my I went to public everything when I come home from working and I'd be done with the curriculum pretty much so I get in trouble a lot in school for messing around because I have nothing else to do but I had to go I had nowhere else to go <laughs> made me feel question. better though thank you <laughs> Really are this is like a million, mini yeah, we're really, really, yeah, we're really, we're really, we're really, really going to work through some stuff by the end of the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're going to find out Danny's my son, the secret, <laughs> <laughs> building so much over 20 years. Oh man. <laughs> so I, what happened? I actually have a question for you guys. So for everyone growing up in that time, SNL was huge. Mm -hmm. For kids. All that was SNL. Did that resonate like with you guys? I mean, being the age you were, was it even like something you realized like this is like this is our SNL? Like, okay. Yeah. Uh, look at Keenan, he's living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's for me. Like particularly when I do like Jack Campbell, Fat Cop, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I was channeling my inner Chris Farley. Yeah. <laughs> One of my good friends actually writes with Stina now, uh, Jonah Bear. And he always like calls me, he's like, you should come visit. And I'm like, I can't make it out there. <laughs> and then when I'm here for Comic Con, I'm like, it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's all weird. But, yeah. Um, I don't know, do you guys have questions as well? Were you guys involved in the writing process of any of the sketches? Uh, the last season I was a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, I feel like all that hasn't really had like an immediate successor, you know, like I feel like it's kind of of its time. Yeah. And there yeah. isn't really, you know, an analog today. Do you think that's part of like this, you know, proclivity to go on YouTube and just watch sketches for five minutes? Do you think that all that could exist today as it did in the 90s? I wish it would. I mean, I feel like in general, sketch comedy is sort of it's not, not in the forefront of, of the comedy world, I feel like. <laughs> Uh, it's like I make YouTube videos and stuff for with man who's comedy and it's like nobody's really going on the internet to I want to look at a three minute sketch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you have to really push it and put it out there and I think I think it happens with a lot a lot of things. I mean there are not really that many sketch shows in general. I mean, like Key and Peel is the only one I can think yeah. of flying off the top of my head right now. Yeah. That's good. I wish it would more. I like sketch comedy a lot. <laughs> yeah. I think it, things turned into a more 
kind of star driven one person, you know, and then make the album and then make the movie with that person and and less of an ensemble vibe from especially from, from kid shows. Are you doing that creepy thing where you know how to yes. type without looking at the keyboard? Yes. It's all oh, that's yeah. 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 There's actually no words, just like yeah. sporadic yeah. letters. Yeah. She's all like, no, no, no. <laughs> she's looking me right yeah. in the eye and I know she's typing something yeah. about me. That's um with five M's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got it. I got it. We have time for one more question and then we're going to swap. Okay. okay. Alright, um, I guess the one last question I have is with the return of Splat, is there any talk of maybe trying to bring all that back? I Even for like an episode? I haven't heard anything. Okay. That would be, that would be very interesting though. Sounds like someone's up to financing. <laughs> Here is four dollars. <laughs> We get a million more people with four dollars. Yeah. Well, the if sad we thing is, with one million indie... likes, they'll let us do all that, <laughs> and my dad will kill a puppy. No. <laughs> you could totally like go fund me that, like in a heartbeat. The yeah. kids from the '90s would all just be like, just throw yeah, the cash yeah, yeah. at that. How do you think the librarian would be different? Done How would the library oh. be different? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. What has twenty years done to the library? <laughs> <laughs> Just screaming, be quiet in my <laughs> grave! <laughs>